Today we're going to talk about the language or the terminology associated with networks. But before we begin, I want to consider what are networks? Well, over on the right here, let's pretend that at each one of these points I've drawn on is a city airport and represented with the lines connecting between them is the traffic that can flow between each airport or each city. What a network is, is a visual diagram or a graph that shows the physical connections or relationships between things of interest. In here, the things of interest to us are the connections between the airports in the different cities. Now there are some special words that we use to describe specific things on this network. For example, at each one of these points, we refer to the points themselves as nodes, which can sometimes also be referred to as vertices. Now, the lines that connect between them we call edges. However, when we're talking about networks, edges actually have to meet a specific set of requirements in that they can't have a direction. That means that the traffic that flows between an edge has to be multiple direction, it can go either way. If the traffic can only go one way, let's say from C through to A, we put an arrow here like this, and we no longer call this an edge. It becomes known as an arc. So an edge is a connection between two nodes that doesn't have a direction. When it has a direction, we call it an arc. Now, if we have a full network of arcs, such as this, we give this specific type of network a special name. We call this type of network a digraph, which we can also refer to as a directed graph. Now the whole reason why we might represent something in a network is so we can visually see the different uh, journeys as such that exist between the nodes of our network. For example, let's say I want to start in city F or node F and travel through to C. We can represent that as a one step journey between starting at F and going to C. Now it gets the terminology one step journey because it's only got one step in its journey. Now if we want to travel from node F through to C, but we need to go through node E, one possible journey could be to start from node F, travel through to E, then we'd have to travel back through to F because we can't travel through to D, and then continue on to node C. Now, this type of journey we call a three-step because there's one, two, three steps in our journey. However, we don't refer to these things as journeys. If we're starting at one node and we're traveling to another node, can be any node, including the node that we started at, we consider these things to be called routes. Now, there's one special type of route that exists and we refer to them as a path. A path is a type of route. Both of these are routes, however, only one of them is a path. What the difference between a route and a path is, a path must start at one node and finish at a different node without ever traveling through any node twice. Now, if we look at this first one, where we start at node F and travel through to node C, we started at one node, finished at a different node, and we never visited any nodes twice. So the F through to C, that one step, is referred to as a path, which is a type of route. However, in this three step one, whilst we started at node F and finished at node C, so two different nodes, we actually traveled through node F twice. So that means that this one here isn't referred to as a path. It's still a route, but it's not a path. Now, it's really important to become very comfortable with this terminology as we make our progression through matrices. 